Okay, we're actually gonna do this. We are actually gonna do this. Are we recording? Are we getting this? Hi! Um, welcome. This is very new to me. I'm very excited. Um, this is something I have literally contemplated doing for a long time, but I've never had the guts to actually do it, but 2023 is the year of doing what we want, when we want to, and not caring about what other people think. Is this called booktube? Booktube? I've obviously done the whole bookstagram thing, we're on booktok now, might as well move to booktube while we're at it, because let's be real, all I talk about is books, all I think about is books, and I never have anywhere to like discuss them in detail. And here we are. So yeah, I just wanted to start my first ever video by showing you what books I've bought since the beginning of 2023. Now bearing in mind it is literally the 7th of February and I have bought a hefty, let me count them one second, 12 books already and as somebody who significantly needs to reduce their TBR I did not need to do this but I was very kindly gifted some book vouchers and money to shop for books for Christmas so your girl did damage. <laughs> I did some damage and I basically want to go through the books that I picked out and just talk a little bit in depth about each book. Um, obviously all of them are still on my TBR because I only have them including everything behind me and I wish I could say <laughs> that this was my only bookshelf. Before I get into my little book haul I thought I could talk really quickly about books that I enjoy reading and genres that I reach for the most. Um, as somebody who was officially a thriller horror only reader when I started my book page back in 2021 um, I am now such a diverse reader like I will honestly read pretty much almost anything like memoirs, non-fiction, romance, contemporary fiction, historical fiction, you name it I'll read it but to this day I am still like a thriller horror girly at heart and um, which you'll see is quite prevalent in this book haul that's coming up um, but yeah I am always open to reading multiple genres now which is just like something I've really enjoyed taking from starting a book page and joining the book community is just how much your taste can grow and evolve as a reader um, so it makes book shopping and reading so much more exciting but like when it comes down to it I do tend to reach for thriller horror probably the most I am reading some romance right now because it is February like it is the month of love but just yeah to give you a little insight you're gonna see from this haul anyway Thrillers and horrors is like where my heart's at. So this was my last splurge before officially going on a book buying ban and shopping my shelves from now on because 2023 is the year of reducing our TBRs <laughs> as well as not caring what other people think. We'll just combine the two and yeah so let's get into it. I'm gonna go through them in no particular order. I'm just gonna pick them up from the pile as they are. I just rooted them out for this video so we'll go through them as they are and yeah I'll talk about them a little bit. Okay so the very first book in our haul is a little horror book. <laughs> this is Ghost Written by Ronald Malfi which was recommended to me by a very close friend of mine who I actually met in the bookish community so that's really exciting. Um, look how, is it gonna focus? Look how creepy this cover is. But yeah this is Ghost Written and this is a book that is made up of four novellas which is so exciting um, and the novellas are called The Skin of Her Teeth, The Dark Brother's Last Ride, this book belongs to Olo and the story. Um, so I feel like when you pick up books like this, which are quite prevalent in the horror genre, I do find, especially with like Stephen King and Joe Hill, and there's a few that like write horror novellas and the book is made of a few. It's something that you can pick up and put down because you don't need to read the entirety of the novel in one go. Like you can just pick up a novella at a time. 
So I'm very excited about that. I just I just love the cover. Um, the blurb on the back doesn't give too much away. It gives like a little line description for each novella. So I can read those out. Um, the one for the skin of her teeth says, A cursed novel drives people to their deaths. Pretty simple. It is what it is. Like, yeah, cool. Uh, the second one, which is The Dark Brother's Last Ride, it just says, A delivery job that turns deadly. Again, not giving very much away. Um, the third book, uh, which was This Book Belongs to Olo, it says it sees a child wielding dangerous control over an unusual pop-up book. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. And then the last book, which is called A Story, is a choose-your-own-adventure game spirals into an uncanny reality. So it's kind of a mixed bag. So you've got some like traditional ghost stories as well as some more unique unusual stories that are going to kind of bend your mind a little bit so this is going to be something that's a little different for me i have read quite a few horror novels but i've actually only read one other one that's made up of novellas and that was by stephen king so yeah i'm very excited and i know that this author has a good few more horror books so i'll be excited to see if i will want to read their backlist after reading this one so the next book that I picked up is called The Nightcaller and this one is by Martina Murphy who is an Irish author um, which is very exciting. Um, if you haven't gathered from the accent, uh, I myself am Irish so I'm always more than happy to find new Irish authors to read and support. And from my past experiences of reading Irish authors who write thrillers, chef's kiss. So I have no doubt that this will be the same. Uh, this book is actually also based in Ireland. It is based on the Ackill Islands, which are off the coast of Ireland. This is more of a kind of crime thriller. So it's set on the Ackill Islands. Um, a body has been found. It's of a local woman called Lisa, who is a very popular person on the island. Uh, she's a primary school teacher, so uh, people take her death, you know, quite hard, especially the local DS Lucy. Uh, she takes this case very to heart. She is somebody who knows when foul play is involved and when it comes to the death of Lisa she thinks there's something more evil and sinister lurking in the background. Um, she had moved back to the Ackle Islands from Dublin after her partner was arrested for fraud. She has spent that last period of time trying to kind of gain the trust back of her colleagues that she works with and she really thinks this case is going to be the case to do that but whilst doing so her son Luke is really acting up and causing a lot of trouble which is interfering with her case and her work and what she's trying to do. So when another body emerges that's linked to a case that happened almost 20 years ago Lucy is immediately like you know there's connections here something deep and dark is happening and basically I assume we're following Lucy in this book as she tries to put the pieces together of the killing of the teacher plus the killing that links to the one that happened 20 years ago and I assume the whole thrilling aspect of this is to find out whether she actually solves the case and what's going to happen so that sounds very exciting. I love any kind of crime novel where you're following the lead investigator of the police department, like following their moves. Um, so I know that this one's going to be right up my street um, and it will have that even more personal touch that it's set in Ireland and kind of will have Irish humour. Um, so I'm very excited for this one. Next up I have Memphis which is by Tara M Stringfellow and look how beautiful this cover is like it's just so so stunning um as an illustration artist myself I don't think I've mentioned that either but that is what I do um my dream is to illustrate books and covers like this just make me like so excited and creative so this one is not a thriller so as you can see like there will be quite a mix so this one is about a woman named Joan who is back visiting Memphis for the first time since she was a child um she is trying to remember the area where she lived um she kind of is coming to learn that 
hearing the sounds of gunshots is as common here now as hearing children play in a playground which is really sad um but yeah she moves back and it isn't until her doorbell rings one night when she opens the door and sees that it's Derek obviously memories come flooding back because she remembers him very well so this book dwells on a lot of this family's history and the resilience throughout the, the years um, and it also goes into the character called Hazel whose husband was lynched by a group of white policemen like what does it say 50 years ago but she was still able to carry on and make a life for herself and her daughters and, and kind of keep living and getting through day to day and now that Joan is back this is one of the only places for her to go um, so she gets to relive these moments and memories with these women who have continued to build their lives in this area and have continued to keep on growing and you know they all have their own businesses they live in the area they have their own families um, and Joan is obviously quickly able to gel herself back into that kind of home narrative yeah it's it, it sounds like it's a story that's going to give a good portrait of what it's like to live down through three generations of this southern black family um, and all of the heartache and growth and strength that they've had to endure so I feel like this is going to be a really harrowing and educational novel even though this story itself is fictional um, I just know that this is one that's going to pack a punch I know these kind of stories are ones that stay with you forever so I couldn't leave this behind when I saw it. So the next two books that I picked up I actually picked up secondhand which is something that I'm also a huge advocate for. Like a lot of my bookshelves are books that I've either bought in secondhand bookshops, on secondhand online stores or in charity shops. So I just wanted to give that a little shout out because this was really exciting to me. These two were actually on my wish list for the longest time. So when I saw them, I was so excited and they were both four euro each. So a complete bargain. I got these ones in particular in the secondhand section in the bookstore chapters, which is located in Dublin. There's probably more around Ireland, but I'm not quite sure where, but I picked these up in Dublin. So the first one, as you can see, is A Slow Fire Burning by Paula Hawkins, who is the author of A Girl on the Train. Um, I read The Girl on the Train. I personally really enjoyed it. I wasn't the biggest fan of the movie, but I really liked the book. Um, and I also read her other book, Into the Water, I want to say it's called, um, but I actually wasn't the biggest fan of that one. So. I'm kind of like 50-50 on the fence at the moment so I feel like this would be a good decider but I know there was a lot of hype around this one when it first came out so I'm very excited to read it. This book seems to be centered mainly around three characters. First up we have Laura who feels like she has spent most of her life being judged. She's kind of known for being kind of hot-headed, has a short temper, uh, kind of unpredictable. Then we have Miriam and Miriam seems to know that just because she saw Laura leaving a murder scene with blood all over her clothes does not mean that Laura is the convicted killer. And then we have Carla. And Carla is the woman who is grieving the death of her murdered nephew. She's trusted nobody, like she is not letting her guard down for anyone. Um, and she is very skeptical as to who did the killing. Then the little tagline inside just says, innocent or guilty, everyone is damaged, some are damaged enough to kill look what you started. So that sounds so of my street. It also sounds like it's going to be like multiple point of view which is something that I bloody love. Like I feel like that really keeps you on your toes when you're reading a thriller novel because you're like it's always that one character's like chapter will end on such a cliffhanger and then you start the next chapter and you're onto another character and you're like oh damn now I have to keep going because I want to find out what's going on. Um, so maybe I'm wrong. I, I assume that that is the case. This looks like it has nice short chapters too so I'm excited to give Paula Hawkins another chance and jump into this one and yeah see what I think. Next up is Wrong Place Wrong Time by Gillian McAllister. Um, this was the other one that I got off my wishes that I managed to get second hand in chapters so this one was also for euro so bargain we are delighted with that. Um, so this one has a beautiful blue and pink cover and yeah I did I have had this one on my wish list for ages um, and I know for a while 
there was only the hardback that was available so I was super excited to get a large paperback because as much as I love a hardback and as much as they are absolutely stunning there's nothing more comfortable than reading a paperback like nothing so this one is based from the point of view of a mother who is sat watching out her window past midnight in October as she sees her son walking down the street what she was not expecting though is to see him armed and charging towards somebody else. She then witnesses him murdering this person and going to prison. Very juicy, very shocking. She goes back to bed, wakes up the next morning, and it's the day before the murder. And this seems to be a bit like a Groundhog Day kind of novel from what I'm gathering on the back, uh, because it says, again, she goes to sleep and then wakes up the day before the murder. So she's obviously, for some reason, being thrown back in time. Um, kind of have no idea what to expect from this one when I am reading the blurb because I'm like that's very different. Um, I actually read In a Holidays by Christina Lauren before Christmas which was obviously a romance but that also had that kind of like Groundhog Day, um, the day kept starting over and over again and I actually found it really interesting and I really enjoyed it so I'm very excited to see it from like a thriller aspect. So yeah, I've not read any Gillian McAllister before but I've heard amazing things so I'm very excited. This one I'm so excited about. This one I actually didn't buy so it technically shouldn't be in my book haul because it was actually my mother who bought it but I will be stealing it and reading it so I thought I might as well include it in this video. So that is Look But Ways by Linwood Barclay. If you are a thriller reader or a thriller fan and you've not read a Linwood Barclay book you are missing out like you need to read some of his books his book was I can't actually remember which one it was because I've read quite a few of his now at this point but um it was one of his novels that I picked up around the beginning of 2020 like just as we had gone into lockdown um and that completely like reignited my love for reading and I literally have not stopped since so it was my mom that introduced me to him she is like a huge fan she has every single one of his books I've still not read his entire backlist but any one that I have read like I have loved and he is a really close friend with Stephen King's I actually like bought tickets when was it last year to watch him and Stephen King talk in a live seminar and there is rumors that they are going to write a novel together which is so exciting but this is Linwood's new book it's called Look Both Ways. So this one is based on an island that are part of a visionary experiment. So they're like taking all of their cars away from them for quite a period of time. And in place of that, they're getting like an electronic powered car that can be like voice activated, very futuristic, that they get to hang on to. So with this kind of like new futuristic car that they've met and are introducing, they're expecting the level of road accidents to be reduced massively. Um, so in this one, we're following the main character whose husband actually died behind the wheel in an accident. And she is like super excited for the press event of these new cars. She's getting all herself already and she's like so overjoyed that her kids will no longer need a license because these cars are ca cars <laughs> are obviously like voice activated and whatnot. So you, you don't need to control them at all. They do it all themselves. So yeah, as the press day kind of goes underway, um, they soon start to realise everything is not quite as it seemed. Somebody from the media has gone missing and the cars are no longer listening to the controls of the people who are trying to control them. Um, and obviously the havoc starts there. So this one is very, very, very different to anything that he has wrote before, just by the blurb from what I've gathered. A lot of his other novels are like family based, more realistic kind of thrillers. Um, or crime novels. He has quite a few crime novels, whereas this one does sound futuristic as the cars would, you know, explain. But um, yeah, it's kind of given Stephen King vibes. I feel like if the cars are going to be the ones that are going to kill us, that sounds very Stephen King. I'm pretty sure he has a book that does that. Um, so yeah, like I feel like this is something very different. I'm very willing to give it a go considering it's Linwood uh, because I just trust his writing. His books are very easy to read. He always does short chapters. So yeah, something very different to his usual stuff, but I'm still excited to give it a go. The next one on my list is my first non-fiction of the day, which is Matthew Perry's um, Friends, Lovers and the Big Terrible Thing. So 
I had put three non-fiction books actually on my Christmas list and I had asked my family to just choose one for me so I had put Matthew Perry's Tom Felton's and Alan Rickman's and they really really kindly got me Alan Rickman's book which I just I'm a huge Alan Rickman fan so when the January sales rolled around I was like I'm absolutely gonna treat myself to the two other non-fiction books that I didn't get for Christmas which I was more than happy to do and this one actually ended up being on sale so I'm very excited about that as somebody who like has watched Friends religiously since I was like a kid um I'm very excited to delve into this one I know from other reviews of this it is not an easy read um it's not your happy-go-lucky friends type story that we're so used to seeing uh Matthew is obviously a very different person and personality to Chandler who he plays in the show um and I know this one speaks a lot about his addiction um which I have seen a few people say is a lot lot worse than what we could have ever imagined like I know growing up that I heard stories about his addiction and how when he was filming Friends there's so certain seasons that he doesn't even remember filming which is crazy um but I know that this delves into the deep dark versions of those events so I'm excited to go into this one like I know to go in like expecting some very deep and dark stories um but yeah as a as a lover of friends I'm excited to read his story and his experience kind of like in the limelight and what that did to him throughout the years despite you know the happy-go-lucky character that we saw on our screens and then it probably comes as no surprise what the next one is considering I just kind of said what non-fiction books I wanted to pick up the next one I picked up was Beyond the Wand by Tom Felton which I'm just so excited to read. I am a huge Harry Potter fan, always have been, um, but in recent years I do feel like my love and my kind of nostalgia towards that universe has been tainted um, as I no longer support the writer of Harry Potter. Um, I don't support her or her views or anything to do with it and I know Tom Felton himself has stepped forward to say that he uh, himself stands with the trans community and does not support her so I was more than happy to pick up his novel and kind of delve into his experiences of Harry Potter um, because it's crazy how young that these stars were when they started that franchise compared to what they are now so I'm very excited for just the nostalgia of this book the stories he's going to tell there's lots of photographs in it and yeah I'm just very excited for this one I'm so excited about this next one I feel like I've said I'm so excited for every single book I've read so feel free to turn this into a drinking game and just take a drink every time I say I'm excited about something. So the next book that I bought for myself in January was Five Survive by Holly Jackson which is one of Holly's newest uh, novels. I think this one came out just before Christmas like late December um, and as somebody who just finished the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, I just finished the last book, As Good As Dead, in January. Loved it. Like, literally loved it. Like, five stars all around. Like, one of my favourite series. I'm also a huge fan of, like, YA thrillers and YA horrors. Like, just, you're never too old to read YA. Like, that's just my opinion. But, um, yeah, this is Holly's new um, book, Five Survive. Yeah, so this book is actually set across eight hours so you're going right in like right in from the beginning so this is about six friends who go on a road trip for spring break when they're on the way there their rv breaks down and they realize that they're in the middle of nowhere um but kind of upon getting out of the car and having a look around they realize that this was no accident like th this was purposeful um and it was done by somebody who wanted them trapped because they want and this was done by someone who wanted them trapped because they want to kill one of the group and with eight hours until sunrise the six friends kind of need to work together to figure out which one this person is targeting um and whilst they're all cramped in the rv for these eight hours obviously secrets are unveiled there's obviously going to be a lot of drama and a lot of tension um so i know holly is going to have us at the edge of our seats for this one because I was sweating reading as good as dead um, and the fact that this one is kind of set across an eight hour period like it's going to be tense 
and I'm ready for it. So keeping on the theme of YA thrillers, the next book I picked up is called This Book Kills. Um, I actually hadn't heard anything about this one. I had just seen it in the bookstore. I picked it up. I read the blurb and I was like, this sounds like a bit of me. Um, I have spoken to a few people since who have said this is brilliant. So I'm so excited. So this one is based around a character called Jess who has gone to this school that is full of kind of like pretentious, rich students. Um, and not long after being there, she finds out that the most popular student at the school, Hugh, has been found dead. Um, she's obviously keeping out of business, keeping her head down because she is trying to keep her school record slick. She wants to go through with no issues. Um, that is until she finds herself at the centre of the investigation because they find out that Hugh was killed in the exact way that she describes her character being killed in a short story that she's written. Um, so this kind of puts her right into the centre of what's going on. Um, and then to confirm this, she soon after gets a text message from the so-called killer, thanking her for the inspiration from the story that she's written. So I am a sucker for like a high school, like clicky, popular group where one person ends up dead and the rest of them all have to scatter and figure out who did it and what motives are behind it and you know, who's her to and who's gone behind who's back. And I feel like this is gonna like hit that nail on the head perfectly. So yeah, this, this sounds like a good one. We're almost there. I have two books left, so I'll try not to ramble too much more. Um, this next one was also bought in the YA section, um, and it's actually a YA horror, and it is called Frightmares, and it is by Eva V. Gibson. Um, again, I'd never heard of it, but it's got this creepy ass jack in a box on the front. Um, and it's about a house of horrors. So it's obviously like a creepy house with like your fake Annabelle dolls, zombies, like lots of paid actors that are just there specifically to frighten people. Um, that is until someone obviously turns up dead. Um, and it says that the dead body that Dave finds is very, very real. Um, so yeah, it says his summer job has become a labyrinth of nightmares. Surprises lurk around every door. And if Dave doesn't open the right one, he'll never get out. And this is like really short. Like how many pages actually is this? Okay, they're mm, around 250, 260. So this is actually quite a shite, short book, like almost a novella. So yeah, and it's YA. So I assume it's gonna be super easy to read, but I never underestimate how much YAs can carry just absolute creepy vibes because I have got way too cocky in the past being like this is not going to be that scary and then I've kept myself up at night so I know this one's going to be spooky. And then last but very not least to top it all off with one last like spooky thriller I've got Sundial by Katrina Ward. I had the pleasure of meeting Katrina Ward at the book party in London last summer um, she's a literal icon, um, but I've still not read one of her books and I'm like, right, this year that is going to change. I have this one now and I have The Last House on Needless Street on my Kindle, uh, so I'm very excited to jump into them. This one is a story that follows the main character called Rob and she has a daughter called Callie and her daughter Callie seems to talk to imaginary friends and it says that she collects tiny bones <laughs> and obviously Rob is getting quite sinister energy off of her daughter and it's bringing up past memories of a life that she's tried to forget and put behind her. Nevertheless, like the main objective is that she wants to keep Callie safe. So she takes her back to her hometown, Sundial, and it's there she's gonna end up having to make a terrible choice. Callie is now afraid of her mother and the stuff she's telling her about her past, which is very traumatic, which in the end leaves Callie wondering if both of them will end up leaving Sundial or just one of them. So yeah, this sounds dark and it kind of like, there's a lot of like alluding to some dark back past story. I am really looking forward to where this going. I know Katrina Ward's writing is gonna be superb. So yeah. So <laughs> this concludes all of the books that I bought for myself in the month of January. Um, so my book buying ban begins now. Um, but thank you so much if you got this far. Um, like I really appreciate it. Um, I'm hoping to do some monthly 
like wrap ups of the books I've read and at least I can kind of speak in more detail of what I thought of them or what I took from them because I know with this like I was just trying to come up with a description based off the blurb so things I might have said when describing these books might not have been like 100% correct but I'll find out when I read them um but yeah it's been super fun to make this and I'm really excited I finally taken the leap to do this so yeah expect a lot more in the future but for now thank you so much for listening feel free to follow my bookish pages over on instagram and tiktok and i'll catch up with you soon p.s let me know what you're reading in the comments like i want to know i love knowing um it does make me add more to my wish list but if i'm not gonna be able to bookshop i might as well just add them to my wish list right so let me know what you're reading